Volente, Texas, USA, Planet Earth, Galaxy Milky Way. This is Purple Bee TV. Oh yeah, we're concert filmmakers, dreamers, and doers presenting live music experiences that span dimensions. We're crafting ideal conditions for magic moments. We're embracing the moment, the dirt, and the beauty, always connecting to your heart and your booty. If you're watching this, you're a part of this. Thank you for being here. Share with your buds. Donate, please, to the artists, and let's keep doing this forever. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight on Purple Bee, very special presentation. The Invincible Czars present The Cabin of Dr. Caligari, a live silent film score. Before we begin, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my friend, a jolly old chap, the Sandy Creek Soup Smuggler, one of the original sleepwalkers, one of the original four borschmen, the Don King of the Donk Ring, the Suso King of South Waco, Grego Lobos. Yeah, yeah see? Thank you very much, e -Bos. Wow, what a special night. Thank you for joining us. You're gonna love this, wow. e -Bos, Yes. What's happening? Well, man? we've this traveled. Is, we always wanted oh, to do Amazing, this. anonymous donations. Bam. Well, we've traveled from the 1920s and we've got a hold of this alien technology that will, uh, it's called live streaming. <laughs> and here we are, we can't believe it. We've got the uh, band uh, ready to go in the live room. They're gonna tell you all about this amazing uh, program they've got lined up for you. It is a live score, live music played to a silent film, just like they did it in the 20s, exactly like they did it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the Invincible Czars to the live Purple Bee room. Oh, yeah. Purple Bee live room. There they are. Here they are. <laughs> Josh Robbins, please tell us what the heck you're doing here tonight. Uh, I'd be glad to talk about what the heck we're doing here tonight. Thank you, Ebos. Thank yes. you, Grego, for making us sound good in here. We're really excited about doing this. We're right in the middle of about a 90 day, 90 day, 70 day <laughs> tour. <laughs> I've gotten a little bit confused from being on the road for so long. A little, little weary, road weary. Uh, but we are right in the middle of a 70-day tour. We're here in Austin, our hometown, taking a little bit of a break before we go north and east, heading to Chicago and all points east and north. Um, and thanks to our Kickstarters, we're doing this. We are going to perform our soundtrack for The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari with the film in a way that we never have before through the magic of this new 1920s technology. No, no, it's, uh, 2020s it's technology. alien technology. Oh, it's alien technology. We've traveled from the 20s to harness in the present day. I'm not sure. You can see why I was confused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we're going to use that, th the magic of live streaming, to give you a show that's different than even our live shows are on tour. Um, we got Louis Landry back here on drums, Louis. Phil Davidson on the violin and glockenspiel. What's your name again? Hampton Rattan <laughs> playing flute, oboe, clar bass clarinet, and keyboards. And then the illustrious Skunk Manhattan on piano and keyboards. And of course, I'm Josh Robbins, guitar, yeah. bass well, guitar. We're pretty sure this is the only live streamed glockenspiel and uh, bass clarinet on the internet tonight. Probably is. It's safe to say. <laughs> Yes, most definitely. Now, you know what? There is a special uh, component to this that I didn't mention yet, which is that when we do these shows, we like to have fun. We're not, you know, we're not, we're not a stuffy old academic kind of museum piece with this. We like to laugh and have fun. These movies have some sounds we would like y'all to make that are here in the studio and everybody at home. One of them is some of the characters in this movie hear voices in their heads. And when they do, we play this sound. Did we get that sound, Louie? Yeah. Uh, those are the voices in the heads. We would like you to join us in making more voices in the heads. You can cackle, you can laugh, you can whisper something terrifying in your neighbor's ear like, I love you. Send them running out of the room. Whatever it is that you want to do. And I'll try to cue you. I'll be playing, but it's usually pretty obvious. The characters do things like this. Or that's a good sign that you can make sounds here or at home. The other one, the other big one that I feel like I need to warn people about is that this movie has two flashbacks, and they're not real obvious. It's an old movie. When they happen, what we're going to do is a good old-fashioned Wayne's World flashback. I think you know what to do. Woo! 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 
hear that harp. And I'll let you know, we're coming in, we're in the past, we're in the present, wherever we are. Yeah, I can see that Ebos is already doing it. He's already ready. Everybody over there yeah. is ready. Phil's ready. All right. Well, I, I'd like to also mention that we have people donating uh, money to the band tonight. Thank uh, you. Yeah, we already had a couple donations come in. Steph Stephanie C. Thank you, Stephanie. With twenty-four dollars and twenty-four cents. We know twenty Stephanie cents. Excuse C. me. Yeah. Thank you, Stephanie guys. Without a C or with a C. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you. We, um, you know. To, let me play on your sympathies for a moment. Out on our tour, Phil broke his foot, and w our van broke down. So uh, any donations you can send our way certainly help us out there just to keep the van moving, literally. So thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, everyone. Also, Kevin Felton gave you $24.20. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Excellent. And we'll, like we're going to be taking slight pauses for the cause in, in, the, in between the acts of this film to recognize anyone who might be wanting to ask a question, you know, try to distract the band. Um, <laughs> if you have something funny to say, please just put it in the chat. We're all looking at it. we got monitors, and we can see everything. We're fully connected here at Purple Bee. So uh, let's do this together. Another donation. Look at that. Anonymous wow. $20. I, I, Amazing. I Thank you. I, I should also have not said Kevin's name. I think he came in anonymous, and then oh. I doxed him. I'm well, sorry, Kevin. That's probably not his real name anyway. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he just changed his I, name, actually. I wouldn't give my real name, so why would he? <laughs> Ellen Hutter. El, Ellen Hutter with $50 Ellen donation. Hutter. Thank you, Ellen. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, Ellen Hutter. <laughs> I guess that would be your last name. All right, guys, you, you feel like uh, you're ready to dive into the cabinet of Dr. Caligari? We are ready. We're ready for okay. some mental chaos. Okay. Uh, bon voyage. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Likewise.
of Act 1. Thus concludes Act 1. <laughs> well, a lot of drama there. A lot of drama. This is the appearance of the main bad guy, the titular bad guy, if you will, Dr. Caligari. Caligari, what a, what a menacing-looking yeah. bro. Kind of, a, kind of a buffoon. You know what I noticed about him is the, he's got those um, Mickey Mouse... Yeah, the gloves. Gloves. Yeah, what's and, the deal with that? You know, we learned something out there, and maybe Louie can correct me on this, but apparently in vaudeville, what was it that we learned yeah. that that means? It means he's a liar. That he's the liar. Yeah. Huh. Because Mickey Mouse wears them because in Steamboat Willie, he's lying about being a steamboat captain. Oh. oh. Wow. Oh, that's why. It's deep. So, yeah. So now you know. The Amazing. white gloves with three black lines are liar's gloves. Okay. <laughs> well, one of six acts down. Uh, sounding incredible, gents. Excellent. Thank How about we, we get right back into it? Should it, go into act two? Right into act two, I think. Start off with a little bit of Skunk Manhattan on piano. He's very, he's very zealous. I wouldn't say overzealous, just, just zealous. The appropriate amount of <laughs> zealous. And...
got murders we've got murders grego there have been two murders did you see that murder grego <laughs> it is it's the same lighter of the lamp as in nosferatu y yeah is that true <laughs> clock bash that's right this says ask Lee about the lighter of the lamp yeah <laughs> what about the lighter of the lamp just that it was the same guy as Nosferatu. Okay. All right. That's right. He's the only person in this movie whose role is actually well defined. He lights the lamp. The, la purpose. the lamp gets lit. He leaves. Boom. 
perfect character. <laughs> so simple. Louis Landry Lamplighter. Lamp uh, yeah, the double L, L, L. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. We had some other tips. Look at that. Evil Steamboat Mickey. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and Monkey Ron. Old Monkey Ron. Um, <laughs> Thank you. And I see Stephanie C. on there. Thank you for being here. So I think Stephanie C., this might have been her idea to do the live stream in the first place. So, um, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so far, we've had a couple of murders, and nobody's sure who did it. Well, we also found out that these two uh, dudes are in love with the same woman. Yes. They, uh, they've agreed to remain friends no matter who she chooses to be her lover. Yep. That's very, uh, it's, a, it's a buddy movie and a, a murder <laughs> movie. It is yeah. a buddy movie. Really a rom-com. Yeah, yep. In the end, they become a thruple. No, I'm kidding. They, they don't. <laughs> don't spoil the ending. Spoilers. Oh, sorry. All right. And, all right. Show's over, folks. <laughs> How you guys feeling? You need a break or you want to jump into Act 3? I feel pretty good. Is everybody feeling good? Yeah. My He's headphones so keep cutting out just a little bit. I don't know uh, if that's... Grego will work on it that. might be me. It might just be my head. My head keeps cutting out a little bit. But yeah, now we're going to get into Act 3. Prophecy fulfilled. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. It's the Invincible Czars. We're playing the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. If you're just joining us, uh, good luck following. Just enjoy it. Enjoy. <laughs> Somebody wrote polyamory. to be the voices in the head.
This is my favorite set on the movie. I love all those leaves and those chairs. Thank you. 
A little more intrigue. A wow. Bit. <laughs> well, we had some tips in the uh, in that act. Ames tip twenty four twenty. Thank you, Ames. Thank you, Ames. We had an anonymous five dollar tip that uh, they left a comment saying that keyboard player in the back is cute. Oh. So it could have been anyone, really. It could have been. I mean, everybody likes that. I see that KF Cameron Neal wrote extra blat. <laughs> in the <laughs> which, of course, we mean, we know in German means, in Deutsch means extra sheet or extra extra, you know, like an extra newspaper, but extra blat. <laughs> yeah, all the blat. Blat. Blat everywhere. And uh, Phil is the only one uh, with the hat wear to accompany the, the uh, police yeah. station scene. Yeah. That was very nice. And dressed like a cop. Yeah. You, one Jared, of you guys is a cop. It's you. Jared Hazelmeyer wrote, those hats need to come back in style. That's right. <laughs> and uh, Cameron, style. Cameron thought it was one of the best flute, flute moments in the whole, oh. the whole oh, dang yes. thing, IMO. Yes, yes. Our new guy. Yes, yes. Newest czar over there. Newest czar and the only one under 75 years old yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Somebody wrote. Very creative, guys. Great work. Yeah, very creative. All right, we're ready to <laughs> we're ready for Act Four. This is uh, I want to keep this momentum going. Right, right. We don't want to ruin I'm Act riveted. Four, but you know, this next act features a lot more of Jane, who's one of our favorite characters, since there are only three characters in the whole thing. <laughs> Maybe more like five. All right, here yeah, we go. Yeah, what about the lamplighter? The lamplighter lamp counts, I think. <laughs> All right, here's Act Four. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. <laughs>
find Very ourselves nice. at the end of another act. Wow, yes. a lot of action there. Jane was uh, almost killed, ended up being kidnapped and dropped uh, when they tried to give chase. Yes. Caesar got away. He got away. Sort yeah. of. It seems like he fell down there and yeah, we're not real sure what happened yeah, to him. Yeah, we don't know what happened to Caesar. We might find out in this next act. You never know. Maybe. Yes, there was some intrigue and Jane got her nighty soiled. Oh. Uh. With soil, not as, you know, sometimes you think of, you know, like when you soil your nighty, it's <laughs> usually means something else. But in this case, I think it might be a little bit of soil mixed with blood. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's a, a distinct lack of blood in this movie. Someone commented on it. You know, they didn't have the fake blood figured out yet in the 20s, maybe. Yes, yes, yes. But uh, it, it, just, it makes it more skillful that they could do a, a make things, uh, you know, still scary and intense yeah I, th I think it's worth um considering that this movie getting a little serious here for a moment i usually don't but <laughs> you know this movie before this movie uh, movies were novelty they weren't considered high art or even art um but after this movie they were uh, largely uh you know a lot of people think that think of this movie as the kickoff to the German expressionist movement, where they weren't trying to make things look so realistic. You know, a lot of the silent movies prior to this, many of them, like um, Man with a Movie Camera, and even um, what's that other one with the boat, Battleship Potemkin, they they kind of run almost more like like the news, like watching the news. They they're just showing real life images, and to people at that time, simply seeing a moving picture was incredible. Um, and then this movie came along and made it okay to be artistic with it, to, to turn film into an art form. And um, although we may think, you know, here we are 103 years later, uh, that this movie seems a little trite, but it is the movie that made modern cinema, it pretty much kicked off modern, modern cinema, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Full credit to a director, Robert Wiene. Vine, Vine. is how he said it. Yeah. Well, also, I've, I just read a tidbit uh, that Grego would like to hear. This director was uh, known as a German film director, but he was actually born in Poland. Actually Polish, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Grego likes. <laughs> He's from uh, Roklaw. Is that, you know that city, Roklaw? Yeah, Roklaw. Now we know. There you go. We're getting some commentary. Oh, we got some more tips. Thank you, Anonymous Tipped. 
Jason, Jason Bin Bin Ag <laughs> Jason. Yes, thank you, Jason Corrigan. We know him up in up in uh, the state of Virginia. Who else did we get in there? Another anonymous. Thank you. Thank you all for your anonymous and not so anonymous tips. What else does it say here? Abstract it says Gitsi. Oh, that's you guys. I also like Poop Poopska. Just as a name. What else do we see here? Lay Vampires form, 1915, 1916. Pretty shocking hit in this box scene. I don't know what we're talking about, but that sounds pretty good. This says, it amazes me that you can portray the meaning and emotions of a story with nothing more than music. Yeah, I guess you can do that. In this case, we're doing it with music and picture, I guess. But uh, hopefully we're adding a lot to the, a lot to the picture. It adds a, a layer of you understanding are. that you are communicating the emotion that may be hard to comprehend from this film. From right. Something, yeah, we try to make it style clear. We're not really used to seeing. Yeah, yes. Oh, look what he said. <laughs> it's Tommy Holton, our drummer of many years. <laughs> Tommy, we finally found out what beantworten means. It means answer, but it's a verb. Um, who else is it? So glad you're here. Oh, that, oh, that's just our message that goes out. Total Rage 76 is a very good... It's like somebody my age that loves Henry Rollins, perhaps, I'm, I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in this, uh, so what did we just see in this last act? We saw, we saw, I think what we've what we've set up is that it looks like Caesar didn't actually do it, but he, but we saw him do it, right? So maybe in Act Five here, we're going to find out what what the heck is going on, which is what you asked me at the very beginning. Yeah, yeah, I just <laughs> asked you to spoil it, and thank you for not. What the heck is going on? <laughs> All right, well, on to Act 5. <laughs> on to Act 5. Here we go. Enjoy. Starts with skunk, as usual.
up on the snoring. Everybody snore. Flashback.
to the present. Amazing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so mystery not solved. Well, not solved yet. Mystery what, still not flashback, solved. With that flashback, though, uh, can you explain what's happening? No. <laughs> <laughs> no one can. No one can. Yes, it, it's a little confusing. They're flashing back. Uh, what happened in, in this act was that Francis, who's kind of the main character of the movie, um, or at least the narrator of the movie, uh, has sneaked into, he's, he's convinced the other workers, the other doctors at the asylum, that the director of the asylum is actually Dr. Caligari. And so they've sneaked into his office at night and started going through his books and his journal and found that he is, in fact, Dr. Caligari. Uh, and these flashbacks are... Uh, what they're they're acting out what Dr. Caligari wrote in his diary. That's what's happening. A reenactment. Yeah. Got A it. dramatization of events that have passed already. <laughs> <laughs> Featuring the very characters that are in the book. Yeah. So well, yeah, it's a little confusing without that. We we added that harp sound and we get people to woo woo so that it's obvious. Like, thanks okay, for that. We're we're in the we past. needed that. Yes. Yeah. It helps tell the story. I also think. the uh yeah. Louis with the ruffling papers, excellent touch. Yeah. <laughs> Been working on it. Got some well, one more act to go, guys. One more act to go. I want to know, uh, maybe this isn't the time to ask, I can ask afterwards, but like, how, how did you guys come up with this music? What is the story behind writing this stuff? I know you've done other silent film scores. Yeah, well, um, you know, we started working on this one before the pandemic because it turned 100 
uh, in the year 2020. Uh. Uh, and we were going to, to tour with it. Uh, and we did do some shows up the East Coast with it back in 2019 while we were workshopping it, working on it. Uh, but then, of course, the pandemic happened. And as we were coming out of that, Nosferatu turned 100. So we went back to that movie, tightened up the screws, added Louie on drums, and did a big tour last year. So we thought we'd finally finish up Dr. Caligari. <laughs> and we spent the better part of uh, the first half of this year, anyway, in the end of last year, retooling what we had already written. But uh, I'll tell you, a lot of the music, uh, this is our most collaborative effort ever. Um, Phil wrote some. Uh, Skunk wrote quite a bit. Louis wrote some. A lot of the... We, we had someone in the chat named Henry Q. Vines. Henry Q. Vines, yeah, he's in there. He, uh, Henry wrote a lot of the music, and he's, he's our non-touring bass player. Um, but, uh, yeah, Henry, uh, me, I... Henry, Henry, Aaron Russell, and I, Aaron Russell was our touring bass player at one time also. The three of us got together every day for about a week or so um, and just improvised while watching the movie on keyboards and guitars. And, um, and we would record what we did for a couple of hours and then go back and listen, listen for what we liked. And then, okay, I like that. Let's transcribe that. We would transcribe it into Sibelius, or sometimes we'd just write it down by hand, music notation. Um, and then come back to it later and develop those themes. They all became, almost all of the ones that we selected became character themes. Um, the music that you hear that's, that we just heard came from a piece that I had written called The Return of the Pink Elephants. Ah. Um, Henry wrote the intro music at some point all by himself, and that, that becomes, that's the... Uh, da -na 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 -na. We wound up using that any time that the characters are experiencing some kind of cerebral, you know, mm -hmm. mind bleep. Mind crisis. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas Holton in the chat noticed the pink elephants. He uh, yes, commented on it. He knows that one well. Also, it seems that the uh, chat is littered with... Uh, Co Invincibles are as collective members, ex-members, etc. <laughs> well, that's awesome. It's great to have us all co yeah. uh, collected here, <laughs> virtually. Yes, yes. Hey, there is one other story I'd like to tell about the snoring. Mm, yeah, what's you know, there's that, that part where I said everybody snore. Yeah. The way that came to be, we do that in the live shows too. We were we did a show in um, where was it? Carbondale, Illinois, where the uh, that this guy came in and fell asleep within the first five minutes of the movie. He was sitting right behind me, snoring loudly. And he snored through the entire movie. And when we got to that, that moment, it's about 40 minutes in or more, uh, where I said, everybody snore. It shows, it shows Dr. Caligari, the actor, really going for it. Just, Ooh. Ooh, it's like Big Bird or something. <laughs> and uh, at that moment, I was looking up. I don't really play there. I was looking up at the screen, and I looked back at the guy snoring, and I just it just came to me. I went... Everybody snores. <laughs> Everybody in the theater started snoring. <laughs> and it was a pretty funny effect. So, yeah, we do a lot of that. Did the dude ever wake up and notice what was happening? He woke up when they came and woke him up to leave the theater that the show wow. was over. Wow, so he, he was the star of a whole scene and didn't even know it. Had no idea that he was so inspirational. <laughs> wonder what he's dreaming about. Who knows? Probably Dr. Caligari. He's probably yeah. just dreaming the show. Could have been. It was probably better Some than the weirder version show. of it. Yeah. <laughs> it was this version of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, it's very impressive, guys, and I can't wait for the, f the finale. The, the thrilling conclusion. The thrilling conclusion. Yeah. Evan, what do you think is going to happen? What do you say? Evan. He what said, do what do you think, think is going to happen? I, I think uh, I would like to see everyone get murdered at the end. I'm, I'm not, that's... <laughs> We'll see what happens. It could happen. All right, well, I think we're going to kick off Act 6 with a flash forward back to the present time. We are. Here we go.
Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. We made it. Bravo. We made it. We, we made just it. witnessed. Bravo. 
We just witnessed what many think is the first twist ending in cinematic history. Yeah. Something that uh, Rod Sterling capitalized on for the Twilight Zone for every single M. episode. M. Night Shyamalan <laughs> of the 20s. <laughs> and M. Night Shyamalan, right? He did not invent the twist ending, although he seems to have uh, perfected it. <laughs> so, it is, all right. So, all along, this guy was a crazy person and he was just imagining all this? Francis was simply another inmate in the asylum imagining that the director of the asylum was Dr. Caligari. Okay. Yeah. And all of his friends in the asylum there came into play. Obviously, he had a thing for Jane, but couldn't take a hint. Mm-hmm. So. Or. <laughs> and she was crazy. Everyone was crazy. I guess they were crazy. Or the alternate theory. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Louis has an alternate, alternate theory. theory. Here we go. I have an alternate theory, which is um, everything Francis experienced was real. And the Invincible Czars and Purple Bee and all the people watching at home are the dream. <laughs> Whoa, dude. There we go. That's more like it. <laughs> Trauma, irony. I see mine well, Another twist. In the, in the control. We just, uh, this, the M. Night Shyamalan of the Czars there, <laughs> Louis Landry. <laughs> Lever of lamplighters. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Well, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for having us here today. Man, thank uh, our pleasure. Really Absolutely great. incredible. Incredible. Man. We've never done a live stream of this pr these proportions. Shout out our Kickstarters. Oh, yes, yeah. our Kickstarters. Let's list them all. Yeah. My mom, my. S <laughs> I'm kidding. Thank you to our Kickstarters who made this possible. Yes, this was our final stretch goal okay. of our last Kickstarter project or campaign, and uh, it happened. Yay! Yes. <laughs> Woo! I have it was a way better than I thought it would have been. I have a screen of all your uh, donors I can Oh, yes, splash. we can put that up. Because and when I say that it was way better than I thought it would have been, I, I didn't know that we were going to work with Purple Bee, so once that was determined, I oh, went, oh, yeah, that one. this will actually be good. <laughs> there they all are. There are quite a few Robins on there, my, both my brothers, my sister, my mother. My dad's not on there, but... Connie Robbins, yeah. Flo. Good old see, Flo. Yeah. Nervous <laughs> Charmy Leon. Yeah, one of my favorite ones is PB. He's here in the studio, or he oh, was. Yeah, Maybe he stepped PB. outside. PB's who got us over our stretch goal. Yeah, PB last, put us over the stretch goal and made this minutes. thing happen. Who so, else is on yeah, there? Yeah, so for those who, don't, who weren't part of the Kickstarter, you missed out, but, but you, you, you saw tonight... And it was so cool that you guys had so many supporters that stepped up and uh, put you over the, not only over the goal, but over the stretch goal to in, uh, activate the live stream. And that's activate. why we're here tonight. Yes. Amazing. There was another name on here that I can't seem to find now that it was my favorite one on here. It was really just like a really short one. What is it? There's Way. We know Way. What about Grub Nash? Huh. Where is that? There is one on here that I really thought was funny. Oh, well, I'll find it later, and then I'll have to email everybody that watched this. <laughs> so, yeah, you're going to have to come back and do the Nosferatu movie yes. sometime yeah. soon. Yeah, we'll have to do that in the near future. Yeah. Uh, and what else is next for the band? You guys, are you, are you done with the tour? Are you going to keep going? Got we're more gonna, shows? We're going to keep going. we got another five weeks. We leave on Wednesday, starting out in Tulsa, and we go up and around to Chicago, New York. We're going to Ottawa for the first time ever. Um, and then kind of working our way back. We have a standing October 30th gig at the Texas Theater in Dallas and then Halloween night at the Alamo here in Austin. Awesome. So we'll be here for that. And Which that, is sold out, I heard. It looks like it's sold out, but I would say that if you're... The thing we've learned about Alamo Draft Houses is that often they have more seats available than our... than, than there appear to be. So, mm -hmm. so it's... Probably still possible to get tickets for it, but if Hall and Halloween's a tough night, it's a competitive night. If you can't make it Halloween night, we are doing it at the AFS Cinema, Austin Film Society Cinema, on November second. Or come down yeah. to San Antonio. Or come to San Antonio on on November first if you haven't had enough Halloween. Or just buy a house in Ottawa. You have time. <laughs> buy a quick yeah. House come on in down Ottawa. to Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we had an anonymous two hundred fifty dollar tip. Just a second ago. Whoa. Okay. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, <laughs> whoever it was. 
And we had, we had Anonymous 20, Anonymous 5. That's pretty good. That put us up to the $574.40 threshold that we were hoping to reach, which means it unlocks a, uh, a special dance by Skunk. <laughs> Holy. Oh God! I'm gonna stop the cameras. Take it off. <laughs> well, uh, we made it. Yeah, not yet. That's at the thousand dollar mark, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> I just tease at five. Yeah, we'll, we'll move this to the several. OnlyFans, yeah. and uh, <laughs> Skunk's got a. It's only five bucks a month to see fully nude skunks. <laughs> nude skunk. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. such pleasure having you guys here. We're gonna hang out and uh, uh, we're gonna watch it back on the patio and and eat some tacos and. You know, if if we got popcorn out there oh, yeah. for the movie experience yeah. to complete the circle. We better go finish it off. I also oh, yeah. wanted to say, if anyone's tuning in for the first time to Purple Bee, thank you so much for tuning yes. in. Welcome. Yes. Uh, we're we're going to be doing three more shows this week. Um, we got the Sonic Guild live uh, experience tomorrow night. That's Tuesday night. Um, the bands are Andrea McGee and uh, who else is it? It's another great band. We got a great lineup. Who's tomorrow? Andrew McGee and Andrew McGee and Big Bill. And Big Bill. Awesome band. Big Bill oh, from Austin. Big Bill, yeah. Uh, Wednesday, we're doing Jack Tronica, the 68th one. It's an all improvised group music show uh, where we take uh, cues from the uh, chat and the at home audience to uh, influence the jams. And uh, that's a lot of fun. Then on Thursday, the West Texas Exiles are here for the 104th episode of Purple Bee Live. Mm hmm. Yeah, then we'll be going next week to Utopia Fest. That's right. Uh, we'll be doing a, a show with the Other Ones Foundation in November that's a big live stream uh, fundraiser event with uh, great bands, Brownout and The Far Side and Heartburn and a bunch more. And, uh, yeah, we're going keep, to keep doing these live stream concerts, and we hope you support uh, us, and we hope you go out and support bands like the Invincibles are yes. absolutely incredible. Incredible. Thank you. Thank totally you. Uh, Very Thank unique you. Uh, presentation and like just so creative. I've always loved what you guys did, have, have been doing. Uh, you've been consistently creative for a long time and it uh, does not go unnoticed. Well, thank you. Yes. Thanks for notice. And also, <laughs> thank you, the amazing crew that we have here tonight. Yes. Yes. Thank you to our camera yes. crew. Abstract and the entire MCR. Crew. That's right. Abstract on the on the the uh, effects on the top layer of this video. Uh, Jake Sam's over here, here directing. He direct. Very uh, very unorthodox directing uh, way. The show was not easy to direct. So great job, dude. Yes, yes. thank very you. Nice. Uh, putting all the technical in together. Grego on the sound, always amazing. Thank you, bro. Yes. PK the on the jib PK shot. PK on the jib. Will Hardy on camera. Nolan on the camera for the first time at Purple Bee. Welcome, <laughs> Nolan. Yes, uh, great job. Yeah, we love you guys, and uh, it takes a village to do these things, and it's amazing to collaborate with our buddies. So, Allison helping out in the bar and in the elbows food. on fajitas, elbows, fajitas, <laughs> moments. <laughs> yeah. That's right. What a crew! I'm gonna I'm gonna play us out, G. Yeah, man, play some more of the czars, and then uh, see you next time. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'll come back with another movie. We'll be Thank back. You. Yeah. Hell yeah! Love you, man. <laughs> Thanks for all the donation. Yeah, so yeah, thanks. Eric the Carpathian came in at the last second there. 24 bucks. 24.20.